what do Dark Tower and Stargate Universe have in common? <laughs> Is Paramount in league with Cobra? And best of all, Hulk Smash! That's all coming up on today's piece of Slice. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Slice of Sci-Fi.com Hey, greetings everyone to another Slice of Sci-Fi. I am Michael R. Menengay. And I'm Megan Zier. I'm Ben Raginton. I'm Sam Roberts. I'm Brett Filipek. Hey. Wow! Hey. Somebody is back! You know, the rumors of my assimilation are the <laughs> <great exaggerated. laughs> And I'm Keith Lane. Awesome. Well, let's get to some news. Yes, please. Your news team is next. So this is good and bad. We're going to mix it up a little bit. Ron Howard has been talking to Netflix executive Ted Sarandos about Netflix possibly producing and airing the proposed Dark Tower TV series. Yay! Yes, because we know he wants to adapt the seven-book series by Stephen King as a trilogy of films with a TV series to fill in the story between the films, right? And I think uh, he worked with them on Arrested Development, so there's a relationship there. Mm -hmm. And um, he was talking to HBO about airing the Dark Tower series, but those sort of fell through. So maybe Netflix can slide on in there and... You know, okay. so we're hopeful, sure. of course, um, because Arrested Development revival has happened. Some fans are wondering if Netflix might not be interested in reviving other shows as well, Please. like like maybe Firefly. Not going to happen. No, not gonna happen. Look, no, that not ship has sailed. Yeah, yeah. Sarando says that unlike Arrested Development, which saw growth in the audience with DVD streaming and syndicated repeats of the show, doesn't think Firefly has that the way Arrested Development does. Of course, that resistance is not stopping fans of Stargate Universe from petitioning Netflix to bring the series Ooh, back for I would one love for more that. season. Wow. Yes. Yes. One more season. That would be awesome. Right. I, I believe our very own um, Slice of Sci-Fi alumnus, uh, Sam Sloan, has been shopping that around Facebook too, so sign it if you haven't uh, seen it yet. Go Ooh, look for it. I already have. Yeah, it's at change.org, yes. and it's asking for Netflix to sponsor a revival of the canceled Too Soon series. Many believe uh, the series was airing just as networks began to understand how DVR and time shifting rating works, mm -hmm. and so it would be nice to you know see that continue because we really do think it was awesome enough to keep going i think there was Indeed. too many people watching that time shifted and dvr yeah. and that's mm -hmm. why it got killed because there's I they mean, weren't counting it at the time they were only counting what was the live viewer yeah, yeah. and that just sucked because the, the nobody i didn't i'd never watched it well, that wasn't way. it wasn't it on a friday night at the time it, it was, was. A weird so everybody's time. out friday's right. a death slot anyway it most times, yeah. everybody's you know? out mm -hmm. but everybody's got their dvr set so mm -hmm. so yeah. of course we were watching it the next night absolutely mm -hmm. So if anybody was hoping through Kickstarter that they might bring back on, you know, in some form or another, Green Lantern, the animated series, or Young Justice, heartbreak, not going to happen. Oh. I'm, and I'm really heartbroken about this because I was actually, I was following both of those television shows. Yes, apparently Warner Brothers, they decided to give the Knicks uh, and just blocked the campaign to bring these shows back. Mm -hmm. Really? Uh, yeah, that smgo TV. Show blockers. Yeah, uh, SMGO.TV, <laughs> they, they met the studio to discuss plans for possibly funding, bringing these shows back uh, as part of the DC Nation bit, and um wasn't going to happen. Uh, SMGO.TV wrote, hey all, I've been trying all day to come up with a slightly better way to say this, but I'm just going to give it to you straight. Warner said, no, they don't think we can reach our goals. Do you believe that? Well, I sure as hell don't. <laughs> wow. So it's being replaced by Teen Titans Go! and yet mm -hmm. another Batman cartoon, Beware the Batman. Mm. Those are those are replacing it. And and I've said this before. You know, the only reason Batman is showing up again is because it's still kind of a hot property. What happens when Superman, Man of Steel, becomes like the new big thing this year? Obviously, you're gonna see a oh, lot of Superman cartoons. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That's Absolutely. What they, do. they just keep going to the same well over and over and hey, over look, until it's bandwagon. dry. Bandwagon. Let's jump on it. That's yeah. right. That's Provided exactly Man of Steel it. is actually good. That's true. Uh, early Buzz says it is. Of course, yeah. you know, it's mm -hmm. not always trustworthy, the Early Buzz, but it's got um, some really great early reviews. Yeah. 
So as production gears up for the Fantastic Four reboot, which I am all for, Mm -hmm. we're hearing rumors about some actors who could be taking over some of those roles. Okay. A Hollywood reporter tells us Allison Williams is on the short list to play Sue Storm. Not bad. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Well, there she oh, is. I she's, know who she is. She's pretty. She's in Girls. Yeah, she's I love that show. Oh, that's right. She is in Girls. She, no, <laughs> she's on the HBO show Girls. In the HBO show Girls. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I watch it. Don't uh. judge. <laughs> I judge. Now, this okay. next part I love. Um, Chronicle actor Michael B. Jordan is in talks to take oh. on the role of uh, Johnny Storm or the Human Torch. I love him. He was that on my one of my name. soaps. He was uh-huh. on The Wire. He was great in Chronicle. He's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, 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 he's one of those I always think of him from the first role like that I mm-hmm. loved which was Wallace on The Wire so every time I see him I go Wallace poor Wallace and I, I want to see oh, there's going to be similar reaction to him as there was to Idris Elba in oh. Thor so I'm like I love him too I'm with you but I'm nervous about the reaction I'm yeah, saying I'm I hope sure not but you one. may be right so yeah. get over it people Um, so uh, Jordan um, is also on Friday Night Lights which I never saw but heard was really good Um, so what do you guys think we're excited let I'm, us know I'm hesitant I'm yeah. hesitant I'm hesitant I'm not sure you know it, 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 we'd love to hear from you guys too you know the numbers 206-339 Trek that's 206-339-8735 and of course use our shiny cool iPhone app because mm-hmm. that's, that's what it's there way. for that's what it's there for absolutely you know on that note let's take a quick break and we'll see what else is going on in the world Hey Slicers, if you have a Facebook account, I'd like to ask a favor of you if you haven't done this already. Go to the Slice of Sci-Fi Facebook page. You can like our page. You can also select Get Notifications. That way you'll get a notification that there's a post by Slice of Sci-Fi. Also select Show in News Feed. That way those articles that we post will show up in your news feed. You can take a look at them. You can comment on them right there in your news feed. And also if you find an article that you really like, If you could share that article on your timeline, then that way your friends can see Slice of Sci-Fi, they can see all the great content that we have, and they can like us as much as you do. Thanks a lot, have a great day, and keep on slicing. Hi, this is Web Genie, and I thought I'd do something a little different this week. Since we're still at the beginning of 2013, I thought I'd share my list of things that I don't want to read about this year. These are the speculative fiction tropes that drive me crazy, and it seems that I'm forced to read about them far too often. Number one on my list, biologically necessary sex. You know, the one where the heroine has to have sex with a hero because of some lame fake biology requirement? I hadn't seen this one for a few years, and I thought that all the teenage boys who wrote these had lost their author cards or something. But 2012 brought it back from the dead. This one really annoys me, people. After all, we're in 2013, and women can have sex for lots of reasons. Good reasons, like love or lust. Bad reasons, like pity or fear. The reasons why a woman has sex, along with what happens after, are what make a story interesting. Flipping a switch that turns the heroine into a must-have-sex robot isn't very interesting and is frankly creepy. Paolo Bagliupi's novel The Wind-Up Girl is the only book I can recall that takes the biological angle and uses it in a way that really advances the plot and gives emotional resonance to the story. I think this sets the bar for this hoary old trope at the right level. If you haven't won the Locus or Nebula or been nominated for multiple awards, then you're probably not ready to write about biologically required sex. Number two on the list the alpha male. This is a trope that seems to be spreading contagiously. Finding a character labeled as the alpha male is always a disappointment to me. When a character is labeled alpha male, I see a story where the author has taken a great big shortcut in character creation. The standard description of an alpha male is aggressive and controlling, generally stalker type behaviors. I find it peculiar that the negative character aspects of the alpha male are all forgiven in light of his overwhelming lust for the heroine. I don't see sexy. I see ugly divorce in 15 years. And at number three, the super smart serial killer whose presence in a book or movie causes all the other characters to become stupid. I realize that serial killers are the boogeyman of our times, but turning your characters into the people of Walmart isn't very interesting for the rest of us. So there you have it. 
If I never heard of these three tropes again, I'd be a happy camper. Perhaps you'll join in during the feedback show and tell us what tropes drive you crazy. Here's what's happening. Wow, excellent stuff there. And I want to say, if you're only listening, this is worth <laughs> this is worth going and checking out the video just for the visuals for the that visuals. Web Genie put along <laughs> with that, ones. because there were some laugh out louds. <laughs> Truly, <laughs> and comments galore. So yeah. there you go. Um, send in your comments. You know the numbers two zero six three three nine Trek. That's two zero six three three nine eight seven three five. We'll uh, put those all together and uh, comment on one of the other shows about yes. it. Well, Ron Moore, who we all know. I know him. Yes, he's... Uh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, how, how, how's he doing these days? <laughs> <laughs> he's coming back to TV in a really, really big way. Uh, we know that he's uh, doing Helix, mm-hmm. which we're all very excited about for sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now he's developing another series. It's Diana Gabaldon's... Uh, yeah, that's right. Best-selling yeah. fantasy romance series called Outlander for television. Hmm. It's a book series that uh, spans... Uh, it, it's a huge genre-spanning fantasy epic. Blending everything from action to period drama to romance, it follows a World War II combat nurse. Uh, her name is Claire. She's actually sent back in time to the year of 1743, so that's one heck of a jump backwards. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's being developed for stars right now. Interesting. Uh, and it appears that things are really beginning to pick up now that more has jumped on board. He's also brought in other Star Trek uh, alumni, Ira Bear, yeah. as well as mm-hmm. Ann Kennedy, uh, Tony Graffia, and Matt Roberts helped write scripts and a potential series for the pilot. And if stars should like what more is coming up with, there's a really good chance that they're just going to, you know, order the series and not even deal with the pilot. So Wow. That's but, nice. I, you know, it, it falls in line with a lot of stuff that's already on cable right now. I mean, with Da Vinci's Demons mm-hmm. and uh, the the Borgias and all those. It's it's kind of a period piece that falls in line with those things. So well, this would be... This is kind of a sci-fi twist on that. Right. And I, I think period stuff is um, coming back a little bit because there's another period show that's going to be about oh, some queen that I forgot <laughs> that's just was just picked up by a network for pilots. So I think maybe it's the beginning of a little trend. Mm. Yeah, I agree. So with G.I. Joe Retaliation raking in huge piles of cash at the box office. It is. Well, it, we went yeah. and saw it. I mean, I'm you know. not proud of that. I'm not proud. It was horrible. Um, <laughs> really? To, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, Brett, please tell us, how do you really feel? I mean, I love Bruce Willis, and I love The Rock, and I was entertained, but I was appalled, appalled at the same time. Sounds like a guilty pleasure. I came out of that movie grunting, and, you know, my IQ was like an 80 at that point. It was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Too many jokes. Yeah. So two of the three screenwriters for the project have filed a lawsuit for what they allege is their piece of the pie. Yes, that's right. They say um, it's David Elliott and Paul Lovett. They had a contractual first opportunity to write the sequel in the franchise uh, if they were the sole writers. And they presented ideas for a sequel shortly after the original hit theaters in 2009. And that those ideas were used without their permission or compensation for the sequel. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Oh. They wrote the first G.I. Joe script. Um, the suit says they were surprised at how little of their original script made it into the final movie. I don't know why anybody who works in Hollywood is surprised <laughs> <Really>? at that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, as a result, when it came time to work on the sequel, they said they got more granular in their pitch, presenting just not just suggestions for, for storylines and arcs and characters, but comprehensive vision uh, to completely reimagine the franchise, uh, including like tie-ins and exhaustive array of documents, verbal presentations, conceptual art, photo collages. They made collages. They made a collage? Really? Video clips, wow. mock movie Is posters, that's, that's suggested worth a couple subtitle, right there. Right? Yeah. Maybe a secret board. Yeah. <laughs> mm, they're crafters. Who knew? There you go. This um, Venn diagram. marketing trailer. I mean, yeah, surprising. so they they really did it up, <laughs> and they say that they were notified uh, in December 2009 that uh, the film companies had decided to engage a different writing team. Uh, it's credited to the retaliation is Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick. We have them to blame. Yeah, uh, I mean, thank uh, you. I'm saying um, the writers also say that more than 100 phone calls as well as emails detail the extent of their pitch over a two Oops. month period. They are suing Paramount, wow. MGM. Hasbro and producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura for Go twenty-three million dollars. Of course, twenty-three million dollars, okay. which is actually just under a quarter of the hundred and twenty million the sequel has taken in since its domestic oh, release. Oh, just a quarter. That's all. That's a drop in the bucket. That's nothing. Right? Wow. Good luck. <laughs> I hope they. You know, good whatever. luck. Whatever. 
Good uh, luck for. Good I hope luck they succeed. I hope they do it and it kills the franchise. No, oh my god! That's, that's, that's what I'm that. wondering. I, I love that people are fighting over taking credit for it. Yeah. <laughs> really? I mean, yeah, that's right? not something I'd be very be proud of. I mean, if, oh, the, if, oh, if it's about the money. Yeah, if it's about the money, but still, they're but fighting still, over taking oh, credit. I'd be money. like, uh, just John Smithy me. Yeah. Alan Smithy. Yeah. Alan, Alan Smithy. Alan Smithy. Just Alan Smithy. Alan Smithy. Totally. Now, I just want to say this, Megan. We know that the bane of your existence is, and I got four words: teenage. Mutant mm. Ninja mm. Turtles. Mm. Well, that that's yours. Mine, Transformers Four. Oh yeah. Wow. The mere concept of this film just just makes me nauseous. The root of our pain is the same. Yes. <laughs> and what really blows my mind is the casting that they've gotten. Us. I mean, we've it's all, weird. they've already got Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Stanley Tucci. Oh. That's the one that has me completely stunned because I, I love, love this uh-huh. guy. He's so great. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then they just acted. They, they just added Kelsey Grammer. From Frasier. Frasier. Oh, he grammar. has now been added uh, to this cast of Transformers 4. Uh, apparently. Like another divorce payment or something due. Huh? <laughs> it might be. It might be. Yeah, because exactly that just recently that. got settled. Um, he's cast to play the part of Harold Attinger, uh, who's going to be, uh, I guess, the big villain for the upcoming movie. Oh, he'd make a good villain, I think. Uh, according mm. to the Deadline, the Attinger character, he's supposed to be a counterintelligence officer. Well, did you watch him in Boss? Holy crap. Yeah, oh, he, he's pretty stiff. I didn't watch yeah. it, but I heard he got good reviews. Oh, oh he was good. He yeah. was he's, very he, good. He can play drama very well. So He can, I'm, play, uh, he can play He's prick got really excellent, well. <laughs> excellent acting chops. There's no question about it. Uh, the movie has also added Sophia Miles to the cast. She's going to be some scientist in this uh, okay. Who knows what? A hot scientist. Imagine yeah, that. just some scientist. Whatever. Among yeah, some, that's all they're telling us right now. So some the ca- hot scientist. So the cast is all the scientists I know are hot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can we just make a movie called Hot Scientists? Hot scientists. That, that's it. I yeah. would watch I that. I would, say that. I would too. Actually, has Axel Braun done one of those? Yeah. <laughs> I think he has. You and Bull's not doing anything right no. now. No, no, please. That might make this better. Awesome. Could be fun. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the plot of the sequel is still top secret, and I think it's because they don't have one. That would yeah, be right? it. Yes. Uh, although Bay did tease to ComingSoon.net that this installment will involve a chase from hell. Oh, they all involve some sort Read of chase from hell. Read into that Whatever. as you will. Whatever. Oh my gosh. I'm so yeah. done with him. Wait, a movie who, about who cars. Said that? Michael Bay. Michael Bay. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. Michael Bublé. Now, now, this next one is good, though. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm going to say, I said it on Facebook, I'm going to say it here. If you are not watching Orphan Black, you are missing out. Seconded. That is so, so good. Really? It's on BBC it's America. Awesome. It's about clones, and it's like a lot of British shows where they move through plot fast mm-hmm. but there's Good. also some really great characters right. and that actress plays like i don't know at this point oh. like six or eight different clones i don't know but you, you they all seem like their own individual character it's crazy and sometimes she's playing a clone playing a yeah. different clone and it's <laughs> brilliant so um i'm really it shows on uh after doctor who in sort of their sci-fi little block there and so i'm really excited that it's been given uh, the green light for a second season even oh. before the finale for this season mm-hmm. yeah it's what five mm. six episodes in yeah, yeah and already yeah. got the green light for the next year it took me like two or three episodes to get in like i watched the first two didn't watch it for a few weeks and then just mainlined mm-hmm. like three in a row and was like why can't i have more <laughs> yeah, so i it, love that I, I that's what i love about bbc they give you these mm. these tight packed full mm-hmm. episodes and then you around. just and then you're stuck for a mm-hmm. while yeah <laughs> and so, waiting going I want so more. we do know i may think it's going to be 10 episodes so we've got what maybe four more this season if my i might count maybe a little off but the season finale is saturday june 1st and then if you missed it you can catch up uh, when it hits dvd and blu-ray which is july 16th wow I highly recommend it all right sounds very cool i think we're going to take a quick break and come back with more news right after this we come to Welcome to Dom and Tom Inc., innovators in mobile and web development. Our affinity for modern computer technology has given us such conveniences and amenities as Drops, Hearst, Club Tyson, and Barbara Klein. Take it easy, fellas. Your wives are still in the room. Our impressive portfolio will blow the digital trousers off any competitor, not to mention our fantastic and fun-loving personalities. With offices in Chicago and New York, we'll be glad to chart the path of your next digital endeavor. And remember, if you're not prepared for tomorrow, you'll be left behind today. And now, let's hear it for the boys in blue. Sliceofsci-fi.com
Well, here's uh, some movie news that I did not even know about. Apparently, there's oh, going to be yeah. a reboot of The Crow. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Didn't know this that came either. as a big shock. And what you came as an even somebody. bigger shocker is that it was Bradley Cooper who was cast to play He's the He's like the part. second or third person. They've been rolling through actors, They've been going right? through And it's happened yet again. Yeah. He has left the part, hey. so he will not be doing it. Uh, right uh-huh. now, it looks like it's going to be Luke Evans from The Immortals will be really? taking it over. Huh. Yes, uh, Deadline reports that he's been cast wow. in the upcoming film, which is supposed to be directed by F. Javier Gutierrez. It's supposed to be a really big deal for him, uh, but he's been getting some pretty high-level gigs. Uh, he was cast in The Villain of Fast Six, and he will soon be seen playing Bard the Bowman in the next Hobbit film, The Desolation of Smog. Huh. I'm actually kind of excited about that. Ooh. But among people who were uh, thrown about to possibly take on this part were... Tom Hiddleston, I would have liked to have seen him. I think he could have been good. Rumor mm. has it he campaigned hard and didn't mm. get it. That was he a shame really wanted I the think, role and he did I his think own, he's like, dark enough to do it. Yeah, right. Well, because of Loki, you know, mm-hmm. he did exactly. well. Exactly, yeah. Um, Alexander Skarsgård, I think he could have been good at it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Bradley Cooper. Uh, they, were, everybody, they were all being considered, but after some schedule changes. Not it, Bradley Cooper. Mm-hmm. I think. Uh, I don't know. I don't, he's, too, he's too light. Yeah. Yeah. Alexander Skarsgård would have been my pick. He's way too light for that part. That's mine, too, right now. I'm not even sure Yeah, Alexander Skarsgård would have been good. Tom could have pulled Tom. it off. That's who I think. I but I t- I would like Tom yeah. because I because he's he's a, he a terribly intense actor. He might have looked too much who too similar to Brandon Lee though. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's a good With part. With all that's the good muscles point. and like martial arts skill. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. Just saying. The, 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 the golf and the Alexander fact has the muscles. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Right. Is Alexander's? He's he's probably my top pick. I think. Mm. Yeah. I yeah. campaigned. I didn't get it. I'm so sorry. Sorry. So smashing news! Hulk smash! Hulk smash! <laughs> Hulk deconstruct. Yes. It appears that a solo Hulk movie with Mark Ruffalo is not out of consideration. I love this. Yes. This we is good news. We might have to wait a long time, a little bit longer, right? Uh, that's because, okay. I can wait. Yeah. I can wait as long as they do it. I know. Mm-hmm. He's so good. A couple of weeks ago, he said he wanted to reprise the role for a solo film, but he didn't see it happening. But now, Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige. 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 Mm. Sure. Uh, he's given us some hope. He says there is not a script in the works, but there is talk about a Hulk movie, emphasizing that all the energy for the Hulk is being put into the Avengers 2 first, right. of course. Um, he went on to say that the studio is exploring the idea of expanding the Hulk and not just in the rumored Planet Hulk, Planet Hulk movie. Which I would love to see. Um, would be really he says part the of the fun one. of the Hulk is his interaction with That's humans. True. No, no, no. I'm going to say it. Part of the fun of the Hulk is specifically Mark Ruffalo's portrayal. Absolutely. It I, is his character. It's just like Iron Man and Tony Stark. Yes. Tony Stark is Tony Stark because of um, Robert Downey Jr. Jr. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, he brought that character to life. Ruflo did the same thing for the Hulk. Mm -hmm. And I was never a Ruflo fan beforehand, but now I'm 100% in. You're on the train. Absolutely. Mm. Well, we're running out of time. Let's we got to do this. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. What would you do if there was a battle between original Spock, known as Spock Prime, and the rebooted Spock? (laughs) This Mm. is so awesome. We're not talking about some kind of a debate (laughs) on some some kind of bulletin board. It's actually the latest commercial from Audi, and it brings together Leonard Nimoy and Zachary Quinto. And I saw this thing. This thing thing is is hilarious. It's not without controversy because um, Mazda is actually the official automobile sponsor for Star Trek. (laughs) But what I can't figure out is. Where does a Mazda car actually figure into a Star Trek film? <laughs> That's, That's awesomeness. Right. Genius. <laughs> yep. Awesome. And on that note, that is going to call it uh, for us. We're going to call that a show. Yep, Thanks, but everyone, it's for a show. tuning in. We'll have one tomorrow, and there may be some multiverse there, so tune in, please. There you go. So thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon.